Welcome to the SDA Housing Podcast, brought to you by NDIS Property Australia. Before starting this episode, we need to provide a general disclaimer. Information contained in this podcast is general in nature only. It does not take into account the objectives, financial situation, or needs of any particular person. You need to consider your financial situation and needs before making any decisions based on the information in this podcast. And you should consider seeking independent and professional advice for your personal circumstances. All right, let's begin. Hello, everybody. My name is Min, and I'm your co-host today with Matthew and Debbie in the office from NDIS Property Australia here in Brisbane, and you're listening to the SDA Housing Podcast, a show that explains, highlights, guides, and brings awareness about all things SDA in this ever-changing NDIS world. Today's topic internally is the um, topic land and build to order. So, Matt, take it away. Yeah, so we receive a number of inquiries, I suppose, uh, from our investors from time to time, uh, just relating to, obviously, as as kind of our business, we sell a lot of home and land packages, uh, we do a lot of developments, but we also have the option for clients to potentially build on their own block, um, do a knockdown and rebuild, or purchase a block and build on that. So the purpose of this podcast is to kind of discuss what's required to do that, uh, things to be aware of, and um, just moving forward, um, what the best approach to do that is. Okay, so uh, guys, we do get a lot of queries and we have to ask our potential investors, potential block owners to send us through details, uh, quite a lot of information actually that's required by our builders. So we wanted today to clarify what that information is and why it's needed. So to start with, we ask for surveyor plans or disclosure plans. So why do we need those? Well, that's just to show the how level or flat or slopey the block is. Um, in, in Melbourne, they call it engineering reports, Debbie. So engineering reports is called contour plans or disclosure plans or engineering reports. Well, surveyor plan, yeah, survey yeah. plan. Uh, so that is, th- these plans, these survey plans show that it is flat and level. Uh, it shows the width and length of the block and it shows, it gives the, the builder uh, comfort that it's going to be a flat block if it's not titled and, and registered yet. And then they'll be able to do the design of the, of the block on the um, on the block. Yeah, that's the first thing. Yeah. And I feel like that's important uh, in terms of building an NDIS property to make sure that if you're building, say, a HPS, you're building it on a flat block, you're building on on a block which could be certified as a HPS or FA uh, property when it when it goes ahead. That way, you're not wasting all your time. We've had situations in the past, Matt, where people said the block is flat, and it is, but the driveway is very steep. So it must be flat from the road to the driveway to the block. Yeah, yeah. Design guidelines and easements. What's that about? <laughs> no, you don't. Matt's only kidding. Is that joking? Um. So the easements are, uh, you know, you know. Sometimes we have um sewers underneath the um the land. Yep. yep. Um. Or drainage and. The things that you or can't, a manhole yeah, in the backyard. You can't you can't build over it. So the council regulations that you can't build over those easements, right? Um, could be a um, power uh, something underneath the ground, yeah. And and the council won't allow you to build over it. So that's an easement. Um, what else did I say, Debbie? Design guidelines. So the design guideline, um, you know, or, or I think what that what you mean there, Matt, is building covenants. So every estate. If it's a brand new estate, it'll have building guidelines. So the estate land developer will say, "This is this. We want brick facade, like two standards, two two front facades, like a brick and a render. Oh, you want color bond roof only. Um, must set, the setbacks are as follows. So there are build rules in the estate to say you must build to the standard in the estate. Otherwise, it's uh, I mean, or everyone does it whatever they want in the, in the construction wise. So the building guidelines or covenant guidelines is relevant towards the block." Now, if it is a established block somewhere, there is no 
build guidelines, build guidelines because it's not a um, an actual estate, so not relevant there. Yeah, I feel like most of our investors would be buying in new estates, though. So yeah, exactly, it would be relevant. Mm. Yeah. The address, lot number, which I think is quite obvious. Why we would need the hat? Well, you know, we, it'd be quick for us to assess on Google Google Maps. It just the address and see what's on the street is actually in the new estate or, new, or whatever. Also allows us to just give you advice on whether it's a good location to build. Yeah, exactly. If there's hospitals nearby, um, related amenities. Mm. Which we would so say yeah. well, we often ask for the address and photos as well. If you have some photos of the block, it would be nice as well. Very helpful. Yeah. Um, what else do they do? Existing buildings on the block, are they to be removed? So sometimes people might have a fairly large block. It might have a couple of dwellings like the main house and possibly a granny flat. Uh, maybe the main house is going to be demolished. Uh, they're looking at possibly building an SDA dwelling on it, leaving the granny flat, or if it's just one one building or if it's an empty block, even if it's in a green pill area. Um so obviously we need to know what's there, what's going to stay, what's going to go. Some of our, some of our builders specialise in knockdown rebuilds. Some don't. Some just want to just build on a brand new empty block of land in the state, and that's it. They don't touch anything else. So, yeah, as as we've covered in the past podcast with Robert, you know, knockdown rebuilds or building in established areas are a bit of a headache because of traffic control and not and rent demolition permits and all that kind of stuff. It's a bit messy, that's all, yeah. And we also need to know ideally what you would like to build on the blog. I feel like that's a question which is more related to all other podcasts, but um, sometimes when we are approached by someone who wants to build, they will just simply say, I want to build an NDIS property. And obviously you need to be aware of, as we've talked about ad nauseum in previous episodes, just the area you're building in, what's nearby, what would be best in terms of the uh, participants in the area, um, and then um, going back, going back to what we were mentioning earlier in terms of the block, is it too too hilly to do a HBS? It's too hilly to do a FA. You'd have to go with IL or a bus. So this is what you call an investor led package, right? And we all know that an investor lead package is where the investor brings a block of land and not the other way around. And if they bring it along, it's up to them to do the homework. Is an area of demand? Are there providers there? Are there participants there? I mean, we don't know that. That's your block. This is your area. Normally, the in an ideal world, um, stock or dwellings for SDA are created via developers, builders, and providers who collaborate together to say. We've done the homework, we've done the research, we think this will be an ideal robust or FA or IL or HBS house in this area, and here is a product. Whereas in this case here, investor-led, Debbie, what's the negatives of investor-led? Uh, well, that there is no demand in the area, and and as much as you might want to build an SDA dwelling, there's, there's you're not going to get a tenant, so really, we would obviously advise, advise you against possibly doing that, um, reconsider it. So potentially no um, participants in the area, potentially no support workers in the area, potentially no endorsement by providers because they know they already have too many houses in the area. Yep. So these are all the responsibility of the investor to find out, not us, because we didn't bring the block to we didn't we didn't bring the block to the party. Yes. We see. Yeah, we get people coming with blocks of land in, for example, Logan here in Brisbane. And we know Logan is has been pretty well overdeveloped at this point in time with SDA. So that's somewhere that we would probably say, well, you know, you might need to reconsider because we know that there's not going to be a demand. Only if you build robust or IL and not HPS. That's right. Depends on what you want to build. So, and I guess the other aspect of what you want to build is if you're coming with a larger block, if you have the funds, uh, you might want to be looking at doing, say, a group of villas rather than just a single or a dual key. Duplexes and dual keys are probably more, more the ideal product, Debbie. Robust. Give separation of, uh, of living space between participants. But as you know, it costs more to build these things. And if you're doing villas, I'm assuming you'd want a pro uh, project manager. Yeah, exactly. Mm. The title and, and status, registration status of the block. Uh, so obviously that's important because it dictates when the builder can actually be in work on the block. Um, and in some cases they are looking 
the builder would ideally like to build on a block which is already titled, ready to go, so they can be sure that you're actually key to move on it, that you're not just um, all talk, I suppose. Yeah, well, but also, Matt, build, build to order in this scenario is, if it's too far off, you can't guarantee workers being the bricklayers, the roof, the roofy, the chippies, you can't guarantee they'll be there in about nine months' time. So the further out something is, the harder it is for someone to plan a project of construction, which takes a year. It's just hard to, to do that, that's all. Yeah, block topography, which I guess we've sort of covered with the surveyor plans. Uh, but, yeah, if, if there is some sort of a, a slope or a hill on it, then, then we need to know in order to determine what could be built on the block. Um, but uh, another thing we would need to know, certainly in certain areas, is the presence of power lines in the street. Because we do, we do work with one builder in Victoria, which is into the manufactured housing factory construction design process and construction, design construction process, and they won't build it where there's power lines, where they're bringing cranes in and trucks, big trucks and cranes, lift up pods and everything. So we're seeing a tendency in the, in the construction industry in SDA to move towards prefabrication, modular builds, right, and manufactured housing due to a lack of workers, lack of uh, workforce, lack of supplies of timber. And build times, we're seeing alternative construction methods coming out, rolling out now around Australia. We're seeing more, we're hearing more and more of modular and prefab for SDA. Yeah. Watch this space, I guess, in the coming year or two years, we'll see more and more builders delivering the kind of product out there. So in summary, I guess, is uh, it's really survey plans, building covenants, address, photos, Soil tests. I was just going to say soil tests, I believe, is another aspect, which is not part of the engineering plans, or is it? Again, that's a Melbourne topic, but um, normally it would be nice to actually have soil tests. The builders still do their own soil tests yeah. anyway. So it would do, it's more of indicative of what your end price yeah. might end up being. So as much information as possible to be given to us, to hand over to a builder that we may be working with, or your builder you're working with, is relevant, okay? Uh, and remember, if you're giving all this information over, the builders are going to think you, you're going ahead with business. Like, like it's, it's a lot of work for them to take on this information to do a, a quote and design and contracts and, and whatnot. So be sure that if you're going to come to, with a block of land, you already know what you're doing with regards to SDA and construction because it's, it's, all, it's all go, go, go that, from that moment on, yeah. Particularly, particularly finance as well, yeah. So I suppose in summary... Do your research on the location. Make sure you're aware of what you want to build. If there's, is there supports in the area? Is there providers and sills in the area? Is it an area where there's demand? Um, what does the block look like? What can you build on it? Um, when's it coming up? When is it titled? And then moving forward, obviously, you know, as something else we've also probably need to mention is obviously the price and just can you afford to to build this price yeah. and finance are you ready do we have a sort of a rough indicative guideline of of what a build would cost various areas of australia minimum 450 minimum 450 i'd say maximum 650 so between that range 550 give or take 50 is is, is the official answer i guess matt yep okay well i i think that Pretty much covers what you what you need to what you need to bring along if you want to have a an assessment on your block of land. Yeah, cool. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you. you. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure you are subscribed and following us so you can keep in the loop with all of our upcoming episodes. We would really appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star rating, a written review, and to share this podcast with those that could benefit. Until next time, catch you on the next episode.